Hey, everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. It is day two of the second impeachment trial of the same ex-president, and it turns out it's even worse than we thought. And I got to tell you, I came into this with my it's pretty bad septic tank already brimming over. But today, point by point, with new video and audio and maps, Democratic House managers laid out in horrifying clinical detail the tragic story of what happened at the ex-president's rally and at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, when the seat of our government and our democracy itself was attacked by the ex-president's violent mob, all because one sad, angry old man doesn't know how to accept that he lost. So let's do some jokes. We'll give you the highlights of the lowlifes in tonight's Don and the Giant Impeach 2. Go fast, we're furious. Do I hit it long? Is Trump strong? Huh? <laughs> Look out. Jeepers. Whoa. Look out. I don't wear a toupee. <laughs> After playing a very emotionally affecting video recap of the January 6th attack to lead off yesterday's session, today, House managers promised never seen before security video of the Capitol riot. That's right. There's even more hard to watch video. Next up, deleted scenes from Cats. At the start of today's trial, the home audience received a warning from House impeachment manager Jamie Raskin. Because the insurrection brought shocking violence, bloodshed, and pain in the nation's capital, and we will be showing relevant clips of the mob's attack on police officers and other innocent people. We do urge parents and teachers to exercise close review of what young people are watching here. And please watch along with them if you're allowing them to watch. You have to watch with me, Dad. The impeachment man said so. Hey, look, Dad, they're showing video of your friends breaking windows and chatting your name just like you wanted them to. Stop the steal. Hug me once, just once. <laughs> House managers left no doubt about who was to blame for the Capitol riot, as Raskin explained. The evidence will show you that ex-President Trump was no innocent bystander. The evidence will show that he clearly incited the January 6th insurrection. It will show that Donald Trump surrendered his role as commander in chief and became the inciter in chief. That's a nice turn of phrase. I would have gone with commander in cheat, but potato fascist. <laughs> Raskin said this case was much worse than just somebody yelling fire in a crowded theater. It's more like a case where the town fire chief, who's paid to put out fires, sends a mob not to yell fire in a crowded theater, but to actually set the theater on fire. And who then, when the fire alarms go off and the calls start flooding into the fire department, asking for help, does nothing but sit back, encourage the mob to continue its rampage, and watch the fire spread on TV with glee and delight. Okay, that's a very good metaphor. I would only add that the fire steals a bunch of property and poops on the rug. Then we got to hear from Colorado Representative Joe Neguse, who laid out how clearly the president telegraphed the attack on the Capitol. He didn't just tell them to fight like hell. He told them how, where, and when. He made sure they had advance notice, 18 days advance notice. He sent his save the date for January 6th. Yes, he sent a save the date for his insurrection. Plus, he registered at Bed Bath and Be Armed. Neguse made one thing perfectly clear. The president had every reason to know that this would happen. Because he assembled the mob, he summoned the mob, and he incited the mob. Word is, he's also got a lot of connections to the mob, but the Manhattan DA will look into that. Then we heard from Congresswoman Madeline Dean, who introduced herself completely. I'm a lawyer. I'm a former professor of writing. I'm a sister. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother to three with fourth on her way. I'm a person of faith. And I'm an American. I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight toker. Some people call me the space cowboy. 
Some call me the gangster of love. Some people call me Maurice. To which I say, row, row. <laughs> Then, the house managers took it into overdrive with security video that hasn't been seen by the public before. First up was Virgin Island delegate Stacy Plaskett. She highlighted the actions of Officer Eugene Goodman, who famously moved the rioters away from the unprotected Senate chamber, saving lives. But she also revealed another heroic move by Goodman that day that we hadn't known about before. In this security footage, you can see Officer Goodman running to respond to the initial breach. Officer Goodman passes Senator Mitt Romney and directs him to turn around in order to get to safety. Keep in mind, those maniacs would have loved to have gotten their hands on Mitt Romney, who voted to impeach the former president the last time he deserved it. So it's hard to see in that video, but Goodman actually saved two people in that moment. Mitt Romney and Pierre Delecto. <laughs> you can look it up, that's true. And you'll go, why is that true? But it's true. <laughs> Delegate Plaskett showed just how close the mob got to Mike Pence. While all of this was going on, Vice President Pence was still in the room near the Senate chamber. It was not until 2.26 that he was evacuated to a secure location. You can see Vice President Pence and his family quickly move down the stairs. The Vice President turns around briefly as he's headed down. As Pence was being evacuated, rioters started to spread throughout the Capitol, and the mob was looking for Vice President Pence because of his patriotism, because the Vice President had refused to do what the President demand and overturn the election results. This is a strange and disturbing day in our nation's history, and not just because Republican senators are willing to ignore a near-fatal attack on their own Vice President, but because today it is possible to be grateful to Mike Pence. Delegate Plaskett also showed this video of a MAGA rioter calling out the vice president. Pence lied to us. He's a total treasonous pig. And his name will be mud forever. Now the real battle begins. And it looks like uh, the American people are very pissed. So good luck with that. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out during a violent attack on our seat of government. Can you imagine a more casually fascist way to address that mob? Oh, right. Thanks, kid Hitler. Not mine. I wish it was. Despite the powerful evidence supplied by the House managers and objective reality, many GOP senators seem to be barely paying attention. Instead, they were seen explicitly not listening, feet up on their desks, reading books and reading briefing papers on other topics. Yes, other more interesting topics like, how does history tend to remember cowardly fascists and enabling worthless pieces of garbage? Speaking of which, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, seen here sitting with all his friends. Hawley, of course, helped incite the January 6th mob by being the first senator to oppose the certification of the electoral ballots which is why it wasn't totally surprising that during the House's presentation, he was seen sitting up in the gallery with his feet up on the seat in front of him reviewing paperwork. He had his feet up on the furniture? Well, great minds think alike. So do really dumb ones. Hawley defended his removed position, saying, I'm sitting up there, A, because it's a little less claustrophobic than on the floor, but B, I've also got a straight shot. Maybe not the best choice of words to convince us that you weren't encouraging the attempted murder of your colleagues. I'm just sitting up here because I got a straight shot from the balcony or the book depository or the grassy knoll. Anyway, I'm just scoping things out. Congresswoman Dean closed by explaining that she knows who incited that insurrection because she was there to witness it. Just after 2.10, an hour after President Trump ended his speech, the insurrectionist mob overwhelmed Capitol security and made it inside the halls of Congress. Because the truth is, this attack never would have happened but for Donald Trump. And so they came, draped in Trump's flag, and used our flag, 
the American flag to batter and to bludgeon. And at 2.30, I heard that terrifying banging on House chamber doors. For the first time in more than 200 years, the seat of our government was ransacked on our watch. I feel for Representative Dean and for all the House managers because not only did they witness the Capitol under attack by a MAGA supporting mob on January 6th, but also because today they had to present evidence and bear personal witness to that attack in front of Republican senators desperately trying to ignore that truth and desperately trying to treat it like it was a waste of time. But it's not a waste of time because whether or not the ex-president is impeached or whether or not they vote to do the right thing to keep him from holding office again, it is important that one time as a nation we look this straight in the face and as it is laid out definitively for the unprecedented and premeditated violation that it is. Because only by facing this truth will we have any hope of stopping it from happening again. Also, I'm pretty convinced it wasn't Antifa now. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Kristen Wiig and Clarice of Clarice, Rebecca Breeds. But when we return, there's more monologue. More stuff happened. Stick around.